Well, for decades, we've thought the control center of life lies in DNA. But a new scientific framework is emerging that challenges that idea and suggests that vast portions of the genome are immaterial and lie outside the physical world. Hey, everyone. Welcome to ID the Future. I'm your host, Andrew McDermott. My guest today is Dr. Brian Miller, and I want to get his perspective on the cutting-edge, potentially revolutionary research of mathematical biologist Dr. Richard Sternberg on the immaterial aspects of the genome. Now, in case you don't know him yet or aren't very familiar, Dr. Miller is a senior fellow of Discovery Institute's Center for Science and Culture, where he serves as research coordinator. He holds a BS in physics with a minor in engineering from MIT and a PhD in physics from Duke University. He helps to manage the CSC's ID 3.0 research program and is a primary organizer of the Conference on Engineering in the Life Sciences, or CELS. And you'll be hearing more about that later because we'll, we'll talk about that on another episode. He has contributed to multiple books and journals covering the debate over intelligent design, including the expanded edition of The Mystery of Life's Origin and The Comprehensive Guide to Science and Faith. He contributes regularly to our flagship news and commentary site, evolutionnews.org. And you'll also hear his voice now and then on the ID of the Future podcast. Welcome back, Brian. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be back. Pleasure to have you. Well, we've recently had David Klinghoffer on the podcast to discuss his new book, Plato's Revenge, which traces the ideas and the intellectual journey of Dr. Richard Sternberg, who offers a rigorous scientific evidence that the true control center of life lies not in DNA alone, but in a timeless, non-material mathematical structure. Let me share part of the endorsement that you gave Plato's Revenge because I think it will help introduce our topic today. You write, As Klinghoffer explains, Sternberg has woven together the fields of biology, mathematics, and philosophy to argue that an organism's genome is not entirely contained in DNA. Moreover, the information representing a species' structures and processes is not confined to any physical molecule. Instead, an organism's architecture results from immaterial principles. Sternberg's arguments draw from the leading theorists who applied mathematics, such as category theory, to life, and his analysis demonstrates that the control center that directs an embryo to develop into an adult requires far more information than could be contained in the entire initial cell, let alone the DNA. The control center, you say, must reside in a mathematical structure outside of time and space. Now, Brian, you've recently penned several articles related to Dr. Sternberg's research at evolutionnews.org. So let's unpack some of your insights today to help folks better understand this provocative new frontier in biology. So how would you describe Sternberg's research to someone who was brand new to it? Well, what happens is Sternberg's research is engaged in a debate that's taken place since about 500 BC. And this is what David Klinghoffer wrote about in his book. And what uh, Rick Sternberg likes to lecture about is that the question has been posed of what exactly is life and where is the information housed that explains how to build life. And since ancient times, people said, some have said that it's all in the material uh, constituents of life, that you have some sort of particles that, can, that contain the information. That's what explains how life is built and that those particles are passed down from generation to generation. And again, this goes back to the ancient Greeks. And of course, in modern day terms, that's DNA. That DNA is very much like a computer program. And then the cell is like a computer and it runs the program to build life and to reproduce and do everything that life does. And of course, others all the way back to Plato, Aristotle, Socrates didn't believe that was the case. They believed that life was more than just the material, that there was this immaterial reality to life. In very crude terms, you can almost use the analogy of a soul, that how do people think? Um, are we just purely physical? And many would say no, that our mind is more than our physical brain, that there's this immaterial reality to it. In the same way, you can sort of crudely think of life having souls, where the souls are what help to build life and development and to explain how life functions. So Rick Sternberg is making that case that life is more than just physical matter. And he's doing that from very mathematical, from a very mathematical foundation, like category theory, topology, and also from philosophy. 
So Rick is one arguing that, that all the information is not just in DNA. There's a lot more information in the cell, but that a lot of the information isn't even physical, but it's sort of a mathematical structure. Well, when did you first encounter his ideas? Well, I uh, was uh, I attended the summer seminar back in 2016, the summer of 2016. And I first encountered these ideas through the lectures of Jonathan Wells, who talked about embryological development, and then from Rick Sternberg himself. I just remember uh, how striking it was because Jonathan Wells asked the question, well, how do you explain development? Because in development, what happens is you have cells that divide, and then each of those cells has certain uh, bits of information in their cell membrane, and that cell membrane will determine how it interacts with other cells how it responds to certain molecules that are signals from other cells, and how it responds to the actual physical environment. And Jonathan asked the question, well, what happens in development to explain this process? And you have to explain how when a cell divides, the cell membranes have to be different if the cells do different things. So there must be some mechanism that explains how the membrane changes. So let's sort of imagine there's some region in the, in the DNA or in the cell membrane that explains that. Well, the problem is when the cell divides again, the, uh, the cell membrane has to change, but in a different way. So whatever mechanism is changing the membrane, that mechanism has to change itself. And what you find is there's sort of this infinite regress where the amount of information needed to explain that is absolutely enormous. And, and Jonathan Wells argued it can't be contained in the genome. And then Rick Sternberg spoke. He talked about the history of different biologists understanding the genome. And many of the founding scientists in biology actually thought that the information that controls life is, is not material, that it's beyond the physical reality of the organism. So when he presented these ideas, it, was, it really opened my mind to whole new concepts about life. Wow. So as you were listening to these, these men, you know, just delivering this information to you, you, your initial reaction was, wow, but uh, how, did, how did it sink in in terms of your own research and your own career in science? Well, first of all, it was really disturbing because there were challenging assumptions I had in virtually all, and scientists believe have been around since for, for hundreds of years. So this, this radically altered my view of reality and of science itself. So it was really unsettling. And I remember having different talks with Jonathan Wells and Rick Sternberg and have really thought about this for, for uh, and now it's been almost a decade. And then over time, I, I've started to realize that what they're saying actually makes sense. And now part of what my research will be is actually trying to understand these ideas of Rick Sternberg uh, at a very deep level and understand the mathematics so that I'll be able to really evaluate them effectively and communicate them.